the Portland Trailblazers are absolutely, you know, I don't even know how to describe them. They look incredible. They look significantly better than I thought they were going to look this year. I will, you know, go into a little bit of a deeper dive of uh, about them in a little bit, but I think I had them as like a play-in team or like a play-in adjacent team. And they, at the time of this recording, as of Tuesday, they are nine and four and they're tied for the lead in the Western Conference, which is absolutely incredible. You know, there are still a couple of teams in the East that are looking kind of, that are, that are, you know, underperforming. Chicago doesn't look that great. Brooklyn does not look that great either. Uh, Philadelphia is trying to manage with their loss of James Harden. They're a 500 team, but as of right now, it's Boston and Milwaukee as the two teams to beat in the Eastern Conference. Cleveland is up there despite them being on a four game skid. I believe, you know, Atlanta looks pretty good as well. I forgot who I was listening to. I think it was um the old man in the three, but uh, I can't believe I can't remember if it was JJ or if it was Tommy Alter, but they were talking about how it looks like Atlanta has pretty much silenced all of the chatter about how Trey and DeJounte Murray are going to coexist. To me, that was never going to be an issue because their play styles are so different compared to one another. They're so independent of one another. DeJounte, as great of a player as he is, uh, you know, just coming from the Spurs organization, he was more than just being in like an on the ball guy. He was more than just being the primary ball handler. He was used to getting into action, to playing away from the ball. It didn't happen, you know, probably as frequently as it is in Atlanta because he was the best player on the Spurs. But I think that when he heard that he was getting traded to Atlanta, it was kind of a mental shift that he under, had to undergo. He's like, okay, well, I got to play alongside Trey Young. I got to be the dude on the perimeter who's playing defense, you know, attacking the boards on the offensive glass and just really helping keep plays alive when it breaks down. Because when you do run a, an isolation heavy scheme or like a pick and roll heavy scheme like Atlanta has done where Trey is basically initiating all of the action all of the time. It's very easy for those kinds of possessions to break down once the defense counters Trey's initial move and then takes away his second option. So being able to kick out to DeJounte Murray and just like recenter the offense and also put pressure on defense to put pressure on the defense to guard somebody who's an all-star caliber talent. But Let's go back to the Western Conference. Let's go back to Portland. So, as I already mentioned, Portland is at 9-3 and three and arguably are the best-looking team in the Western Conference, arguably the most surprising team in the Western Conference, right up there with Utah, who actually has the second-most wins in the NBA. I cannot believe that this is real. I cannot believe we're talking about the Utah Jazz having more wins in the NBA than every other team that isn't Boston or Milwaukee, who are the two best teams in the league right now. So if we remember last year, it was an absolute wash for Portland. Dame gets hurt, misses the entire season with, um, it was some abdominal injury. They sold the entire second half of the season. They basically put the ball in Anthony Simons' hands, and they were like, go get your 30, go get your 25, but just make sure that we stay at the bottom of the draft lottery. And fortunately, that wasn't too difficult of a task. Simons was balling out, putting up numbers, and the supporting cast was not good enough to weather the loss of Damian Lillard, especially because Portland recently, over like the last handful of seasons, has struggled with depth more than anything else, at least in my eyes. The Blazers, when it was Dame and when when it was CJ, yes, they had talented pieces like that big three with them two and Nurk was very solid, very reliable, but they didn't have the pieces that they have now. And they're not even fully healthy yet. So right away, what jumps off the bat to me isn't necessarily Dame because Dame is a demon, okay? This is, you know, arguably the best point guard in the NBA. Top three at his position right up there alongside Steph, alongside Kyrie. He's going to ball out. He's going to be a perennial All-NBA first team guy. This year, so far, he's off to a scorching start, 28 points, six assists on 65% true shooting. But what it is for me, the shift has come defensively. Boston, uh, Boston, Portland is significantly better defensively than they have been in recent memory. At the time of this recording, they are fourth in points per game allowed and seventh in defensive rating. This is the same team that was 
probably towards the bottom of both of those categories, was the worst team in regards to uh, efficiency last season. The year before that, they were 29th. The year before that, they were 28th. The year before that, they were 16th. That was their best defensive season in recent memory. Of course, I'm looking at the roster right now. You're looking at Mo Harkless. Look at Al Farouk Amino, uh, Ami, Amino, Aminu, um, Yosef Nurkic. Um, I'm trying. That's that's really it. But still, you have multiple guys who could defend on that team. But even then, like 16th in efficiency is is average. So that you know, whatever it all balances out. But now Portland is legitimately good, both on defense and all around. And as I already mentioned, their defense is what has propelled them off to this start and their defense is looking better because of really two main guys that is Jeremy Grant and Shaden Sharp the rookie whom they drafted with the seventh overall pick in the most recent draft Jeremy Grant arrived in Portland uh, earlier this summer or during the summer late in the summer if I remember he was a very late acquisition and full transparency I absolutely love Jeremy Grant I love his game he was a guy who I felt that Brooklyn should have pursued very, very intensely when they were trying to fill out like the Kyrie, Harden, KD trio. Great player on both ends of the floor. Is long, is lanky, is very athletic. Um, and has, you know, he has the motor to complement his physical skills. And of course, being able to guard, you know, one through four, one through three, at the least potentially even a small ball five is an asset that any team would feel to have. And of course, he is turning up. He is finally in a spot where he can play his game. Um, When it was, where was he at? When he was with, you know, Denver, with Detroit, having to be like that, having to be the guy on the offense, that is not Jeremy Grant's game. He is not a talented enough offensive player to lead in offense. He could still go out and get you 18, 19, 20 a night, which is precisely what he's doing with Portland. And he's a much improved three-point shooter as well, shooting 46% on five attempts this year. But beyond beyond that, beyond, beyond what he gives you on offense, which of course is a nice boost, Portland sought him out for defensive purposes. And he is delivering on defense. And along with Shaden Sharp and also Justice Winslow, I didn't mention him. Um, I didn't mention him originally, but that gives you three guys on the perimeter who have great size. Shaden Sharp in particularly in particular is a physical specimen. This guy is like six six with a seven foot wingspan, and his productivity on defense is very apparent. Um I looked on NBA.com this morning. Shaden Sharp is <laughs> opponents are shooting Thirty-seven and a half percent when guarded by him, and that includes thirty-one percent from three. As a rookie, that is incredible. Now, is he a Herb Jones caliber defensive player? I don't know yet. We're gonna have to wait and see. He doesn't block shots. He doesn't really get steals at that great of a rate. Where is he at? Currently, he's averaging 0.6 steals and blocks combined in just about. 20 minutes a game. For comparison, Jeremy Grant is not that much better. Just kidding. So Portland, their defense, just based off of, you know, their steals and their blocks, they are not the type who are gambling that frequently. And, you know, while you do have some good pieces, also you have Yusuf Nurkic on the back end, who isn't an elite defender, but is still a big body who can patrol the paint, who can, you know, force offensive uh, offensive players to adjust their plan of attack you do you still do have to compensate for Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons and I think that is a switch that maybe not a switch but something that Chauncey Billups recognizes in his second year and it's that you know we're just going to play defense straight up we're not going to get you know we're not going to try to get cute with steals we're not going to try to block shots because they're also not that they don't have a lot of height on this team um, outside of Yusuf Nurkic, they're really not playing anybody who is like comparable to him. I mean, Jeremy Grant's like six nine, but he's still a wing. He's not a big. So they're kind of just playing to their strengths. And they are using their length on the perimeter to really bother a lot of the teams that they're that they've gone up against. And 
I am I might be the most shocked man in America when it comes to the Portland Trailblazers because they are they're they're way better than I thought. I thought they were gonna have another sorry ass year. I thought that this might actually be the year that Damian Lillard runs from the grind and goes to the and goes to Portland's front office and he's like, please get me the fuck out of here. I'm thirty years old. I have to go somewhere and not like I have to go somewhere and actually contend for a title because Portland, even when Dame and CJ were popping off, they were never really Western Conference contenders. They had like that really short window before the Warriors rose to prominence where folks really thought that they were going to do something and they just, they failed miserably. The team building was not there. The coaching situation was a little iffy. I mean, Terry Stotts was a decent coach, but probably not the guy to lead them to the promised land, but like on the court, everything was good. Like you had Damon, you had CJ and Dame's putting up 50 and 45 going up against Steph, you know, late in the season during playoff races and even during the playoffs themselves. But then they just weren't able to compete with teams like Golden State, with teams like Houston when Houston was doing their thing. But this might be like a shift. I feel like this team has a clear identity now beyond Damian Lillard. That's something that when you have a player who is as prominent as Damian Lillard, who who is as impactful as Damian Lillard is, teams can sometimes base their identity around that player, which isn't always necessarily the best way to go because what are you going to do when that guy isn't on the court? You know, you can still have an identity that includes Dame, And then when he's there, you know, play through him, obviously. But you need something else to fall back on when Dame isn't there. And this goes for all elite players. Like, you need someone who can... You need guys who can weather the storm when Dame, guys like Dame, Steph, LeBron a few years ago. Basically, you you need depth. And you need guys who know their roles. And their roles are clearly defined. This is what you get with Justice Winslow, who is also performing pretty well on defense. He has a defended field goal percentage of 43.9% or 42.9% will round up to 43, which not the best, but it's below average, you know, 43% on overall shots. That's pretty good, especially when a lot of teams are shooting 46, 47% from the field. So Portland is doing great things. They're a lot of fun to watch. I haven't actually caught any of their games live, unfortunately, but I think after seeing how well they're performing, and I really just want to get a better understanding of what makes them tick defensively. Like, that's something that I really want to observe and just see, like, what exactly is different with this team? Because they have great players. They have great defenders, I should say. They have these guys who play with a lot of effort, which is always great on defense, but there is more to it. I mean, the system is sound. They're able to absorb, again, they're able to absorb the lack of defense that you consistently get from Dame and Simons, which is a, which is an impressive feat. It's always a great feat when you can hide not one, but two guys who log a considerable amount of minutes. 